A cargo is carried under a bit of lading subject to the Hague Visby rules. It's discharged by the carrier and is held in the carrier's custody in the port area. A little while later, the carrier then delivers the goods against a letter of indemnity, an LOI, given to it by its charterer to a receiver, but without production of the bill of lading. A fairly common enough scenario. Under the bill of lading contract, that delivery is a misdelivery because delivery can only, as between the parties to the bill of lading contract, be made to the party presenting the bill. Usually, the cargo is delivered to a person who is entitled to it and there isn't a problem. But not always. The cargo may end up in the wrong hands and the carrier may end up being sued by the bill of lading holder. Can the carrier rely upon the one-year time bar in, the article, in Article 3, Rule 6 of the hague Visby Rules or the Hague Rules when it has misdelivered the cargo in this way? In 2018, in the Alhani, a Hague Rules case, David Fox and QC, as he then was, decided that it could, at least where the misdelivery occurred at the same time as discharge from the vessel, so that discharge and misdelivery were simultaneous. That was a tanker case with a liquid cargo, so misdelivery and discharge occurred at the flange at the same time. And therefore the misdelivery occurred on discharge and within the so-called Hague, Hague Visby rules period of responsibility from loading to discharge. But what if, as is common, the goods are discharged by the carrier and then held by the carrier in the port and then some time later uh, delivered without production of the bills of lading? Does the carrier have the protection of Article 3, Rule 6 in those circumstances? That was a point that was specifically left open and specifically not addressed by David Foxen in the Alhani. That important and open question was answered today in the Commercial Court in the case of Finbank PLC and KCH Shipping, the giant ace. The court dismissed a Section 69 appeal brought by Finbank against an award of a pretty heavyweight tribunal Julia Dias QC, Sir Bernard Eda, and Timothy Young QC. The bank, as the bill of lading holder, argued, as it had unsuccessfully argued before the arbitrators, firstly, that whatever the position was where misdelivery and discharge were coincident, the Hague rules and the Hague Visby rules had no application after discharge on their true construction, and so the time bar was at large and was six years. KCH Shipping, the carrier, argued firstly that uh, on the true construction of the Hague-Visby rules, both the wide language of Article 3, Rule 6 in the original Hague rules wording, but also as expanded upon by the Visby protocol uh, for the Hague-Visby rules text, the time bar was clearly extended so as to apply up to delivery. Secondly, that even if that was not the case, there was an implied term in the Bill of Lading contract of carriage what was called a carver implied term from carver on bills of lading, that the Hague-Visby rules, duties and responsibilities and immunities would continue until actual delivery of the goods by the carrier, because it was unreal to suppose that the parties contemplated different regimes at, at different stages under one contract of carriage. The court agreed with the arbitrators and with KCH shipping. In a detailed judgment, Sir William Blair held that given that the purpose of Article 3, Rule 6 was to allow carriers to close their books after a year, and given that there were uncommercial fine distinctions if discharge was taken as the cut-off point, and given the language and structure of Article 3, Rule 6, Article 3, Rule 6 of the Hague-Visby Rules applied to misdelivery whenever it occurred. Alternatively, there was an implied term to, that, to the effect that the Hague-Visby Rules continued to govern, and that would be so unless the parties had made it clear that the Hague-Visby rules were not to govern. The bank had a second string to its bow. It relied upon clause 2C of the standard congen bill form, which has words to the effect that the carrier shall in no circumstances be responsible for loss of or damage to the goods occurring before loading or after discharge. And they contended that that was effectively a contracting out of the Hague-Visby rules applying up, up, up to delivery and after discharge, if they were wrong about the, the construction of Article 3, Rule 6, and was in any event fatal to the implication of an implied uh, term or an implied contract, and heavy reliance was placed upon the decision of the Court of Appeal in the MSC Amsterdam. The judge, like the arbitrators, disagreed and held that the language of Clause 2C 
was very different from that considered by the Court of Appeal in the MSC Amsterdam and had no effect either on the application of the Hague-Visby rules or on the implied term. So where are we now? Well, good news for carriers. The Court has made it clear that a one-year time bar under the Hague-Visby rules applies to the carrier's responsibilities for the cargo, not only during the sea carriage stage, but also in the custody stage up to and including delivery. As I've said, the case was a case on the Hague-Visby rules, so there may be a, a suggestion that a, a different approach should be taken to the differently worded provision in the Hague rules, but the reasoning of the judge is pretty general, uh, and it, the, the decision in this case is likely uh, to be decisive of the position not only under the Hague-Visby rules, but also under the Hague rules. Thank you.